Hola, ingenieros. Hola. Uh, mi español es muy malo. So I'll be speaking in English today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Is that, I can take the window too. Um, and I'm really excited. I have never, I really wish I could have traveled for this. Um, going to Mexico from where I live is not very hard at all. And it's the same time zone and <laughs> be a lot easier, but what are we gonna do? It's a pandemic. Um, it's my first one. I've never done a pandemic before. So um, I'm learning. So I, I wanna talk to you about contributing to Cassandra. And it's an, this can be a very overwhelming topic. So I'm gonna try to walk through it in all the different ways. So uh, let's see. So when, when you contribute something to Cassandra, it, you're, the cost for you is really in three parts. Um, you have code that you could give, um, your time, and then how much effort you put into it. Um, and all of these are variable. You can do zero or a lot. So uh, I'm gonna walk through all of the different types of contributions you can do. And uh, we can, you know, and feel free to ask questions. I should probably bring up the chat window. If I um, I'm watching Patrick, I'll let yes. you know. Yeah, oh, I got support. Yeah, no, you got yeah, support. Yes, you do, you uh, do. Gracias. All right, so, <clears throat> so in general, Here's a here's a large list of or big companies that uh, contribute to Cassandra. And what's interesting is that this is a this is a list of companies that I'm sure you've all heard of, and including data stacks. But the most contributions don't come from the largest companies. We have thousands of people that contribute to Cassandra, and um, these are companies that are friendly to open source. But and and can get you uh, a full time job contributing to open source, um, but that's that shouldn't block you. That shouldn't stop you. Um, we are Apache Cassandra, of course, is an Apache Software Foundation project, and how they work is uh, something that you have to get to know a bit, but. At the, at the largest group of people are, are the users, people who are just enthusiastic. And um, these are just anyone and everyone out here, uh, engineers, um, contributors of all sorts. But <clears throat> the, the, the way the projects are designed is that you have users for projects, people who develop code for the projects. And then once you become, um, once you get to a certain level where you can develop code pretty easily. And um, the other committers, there's committers on the project. And a committer is someone who could actually um, change the code base. They can actually, they can commit code into Git. And other committers will vote uh, from time to time to bring developers that have been doing significant contributions into that committer role as well. And then eventually we have the project management committee, that's the PMC. And that is a group of committers that um, are, they're charged with making sure the project is run well by the Apache Software Foundation. And that's really how it works. Everyone in here is a volunteer. And if you look at a big project like Cassandra or Spark or um, I'm trying to think of other ones, Kafka, those are all volunteer efforts. And some of those volunteers get paid and some don't. So how do you become a contributor? I, I hear that a lot. And I, um, I think it's a really great um, thing to ask because it's the right spirit for open source. It's like, I really wanna contribute, great. <laughs> so let's start with just what I think most will think about in contribution is code contributor. So you should always start here. Go to cassandra.apache.org. We have an entire page on how to contribute to Cassandra. Um, of course, I'm not saying go read the docs. I will walk you through it. 
but we are very uh, clear on how we want uh, contributions to look. And there's some things about code quality and things, but more importantly, I want you to think about like what you can do. Cause this is overwhelming. Sometimes you look at this and you, you don't know what just where to start. So another question I get a lot is, do I need to know anything about distributed systems? Cassandra is a complicated system. It's um, very advanced in a lot of its features. And that's another one that people worry about. Engineers that I talk to are like, well, I don't know anything about a distributed system. That's okay. You do not need to know a lot about distributed systems. And what I would say is this is a great way to learn distributed systems. That's right. This is a good way to learn about them, working on a production database. Um, so how can you do that? Well, there's two buckets that I will put it in. There's this opportunity to help others, which is easy, where we have plenty of need for documentation. If you can explain things really well, um, and I'll tell you, there's not a lot of Spanish content out there around Cassandra, and it would be great if we had that. Um, a thing that I call community education or community help. And then finally, there's this whole opportunity to learn about distributed systems from the world experts in distributed systems. This is, um, and when you learn about, this is also a good path to getting a different job if you're interested in distributed system, because when you start learning about a database like Cassandra and you start working on it, all of a sudden, all those companies that I showed you before will be very interested to talk to you. Um, they'll want you, they'll want to know who you are and if you could help them. And I know a lot of people that work at Apple now that started out as a contributor to Apache Cassandra because, because Cassandra is such a big thing at Apple, they are always looking for really good Cassandra talent. But how do you learn about Cassandra? Uh, Cedric and, and David did a really good job of explaining how to use Cassandra. But how do you learn about how to make Cassandra? And that's what I want to talk about. So um, going through the non-coding things, and like especially around community education, um, you can contribute to our documentation, write a blog post, give a talk. The last two are the easiest. If you're interested in giving a talk about a use case or something you learned about Cassandra, something you've done with Cassandra, um, we would love to help you. Um, we, are, we have a team that will help you. We have the, a thing that we call the global meetup. Um, we do it in a variety of languages. Um, and so we have uh, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Chinese, Japanese. There's a lot of um, local communities in the world that this is a part of our network. And it's important that we have that local content. So if any one of you were to give a talk about um, Cassandra or something around it, um, we could find a place for you to give that talk, either using, uh, right now it's online, but locally as well. Um, contributing to documentation is um, something that is a little more involved, but it also is helpful. Now, here's a huge call to action. <laughs> it's like all of our documentation is in English. None of it is in Spanish or French or Japanese. Um, I, I think this is a, a good opportunity for anyone who wanted to tackle that. I'm not asking everyone to do this, but it is something. And um, if you, or at least some parts of it, like a getting started, getting started is such a critical part of our documentation on the website. And if we had a getting started in say Spanish, that would be really helpful for the community at large. All right, keep moving here. Community help. Um, and you'll see this a lot. Community help is people asking questions that have questions and we get answers. So, um, there is a uh, ASF, the Apache Software Foundation has a Slack channel, the users, Cassandra users, which is great. Um, we have our users at uh, cassandra.apache.org, which is a mailing list. Um, 
There are questions there from time to time. Um, and then things like Stack Overflow, uh, where all good engineers go to copy and paste their next code. <laughs> uh, you know you do. The Stack Overflow questions with the Cassandra tag are out there. It's a great way to get credibility, um, build up and help somebody who's in trouble because there's a lot of people in trouble. Um, if you look on the community tab for, on the Cassandra website, you'll see that there's all of this is listed there. But um, yeah, this is this is a really important part of our community is helping each other. This is what we want to do. So you really want to code. All right. And I'm talking to engineers, great engineers. So I figure all of you probably want to write some code and get credit for it. I like that. So right now where we're at in the project is um, the uh, code is at 4.0. Um, we're at a code freeze on 4.0. And so we're getting ready to ship 4.0. But that means, it doesn't mean we're stopped writing code for 4.0. It means we have a lot of things piling up right now that need to get finished so we can get 4.0 out the door. And we could really use your help, a lot of it, because there's little things everywhere. And you could get that much coveted 4.0 contributor shirt once it ships. Yes, that's right. Every major version, Datastax prints shirts for the t-shirts for uh, that version contributors, and we send we send them out via mail to everyone uh, that contributed to the code base. Because once you contribute, that goes into GitHub, and that's you can't erase that. Although mine got erased, but I'm not bitter. Um, anyway, so we have other vision uh, versions that are now in critical bug fix. Um, there is still some work that can be done there, but 4.0 is kind of the one you want. So bug fixing, um, you know. If you find a bug or you can go look for a bug, um, writing tests, and I will cover all of this soon. And new features, um, that is a level of activity that if you wanna pull, build a new feature for Cassandra, you could talk to me personally. I wanna hear all about this because this is really an interesting database and adding things to it is really fun. So before you start doing any coding, you have to think about one thing, signing the contributor license agreement. Um, that is an important, I have the link here and you'll get the slide so you can just click on the link. But the contributor license agreement is a critical piece of contributing code to an Apache project. And essentially what it says is that um, this is code that isn't owned by anybody else um, and that when I donate it, it is now freely a part of the Apache Software Foundation um, and can be, it can be applied to the Apache license. It's a very important part of contributions to, to open source. Um, every open source project has a contributor license agreement, um, but getting that signed first is the first step. So how about submitting a patch? The basics, it's not basic sometimes, but um, <clears throat> we have a lot of documentation on how you do this, but it's essentially what you're doing is you're creating a branch of your own. Um, you create a merge uh, path if you're bug fixing, and you want to make sure that those versions can be hard to be patched in advance. We have a code style guide. So um, when someone does a, a code review on your code, they will look at the, the style and um, that is something that they will mention. It's like, you know, tabs versus spaces, semicolons and open parens, all those things. <clears throat> and adding new tests. You need, uh, it's a very important part of Cassandra that we have good test coverage because there's a lot of automated testing that happens when we do builds. And submitting new features, especially without a test, will never get into the project. Um, and then finally running, um, the continuous integration tests to make sure that we, you know that nothing got broken, and that's that's kind of a big deal for us because um, there are so many different contributors to the to the project, and there's a lot of things happening that having this automated, uh, we use Circle CI, um, makes makes it so that you feel confident, and then the rest of the project feels confident. It's good for you. Um, 
because then you don't have to ask if you broke it, it'll tell you. <laughs> and once you're done, you put an entry into the changes.txt, which is uh, for critical bugs or features. So when you're done, you submit the branch and it gets reviewed and um, committed into the project by a committer. You will not have the commit, you will submit a pull request. So I, I put this really, really ugly um, URL here and <laughs> only because I know that you're gonna get these slides and you'll be able to click on it. <laughs> um, there is a thing, and, and I know for a, a lot of non-native English speakers, the word low-hanging fruit means nothing. Um, so I apologize in advance, but let me tell you what it is, is we have a tag on our, on our Apache Jira called low-hanging fruit. And really what that is, is it's, these are tickets, these are Jiras that have features that are easy to approach. They're considered somewhat approachable and easy for a newcomer. And it's to encourage new code contributors to find something easy that they can work on or something that applies to them. Now, when I say easy, I'm not saying that, oh, this, there's no, you, know, you won't learn anything from it. Oh, there's just a variety of things. And it could be a lot of things. Um, I have a screen grab here. Um, <clears throat> like that first one, don't allocate unneeded merge iterator on on disk token iterator. You may have to learn a little bit about what a merge iterator is. Okay, but the very next one is improve docs on disk access mode. That one's, that one's a little less, that's uh, not even a code contribution. But these are things that newcomers should feel like they could tackle and get to. So what about that? So there's certain groups of things that are really, and this, this can take different ability levels. You don't have to be an amazing Java programmer to, to make any code, uh, code contributions. For instance, we have packaging and deployment, like some scripting. Um, everything that, that happens as a server, Cassandra, um, it gets deployed somewhere. Um, right now, of course, this is a label for CentOS 8 and using JE Malloc. Um, these are command line problems. So we're looking to, it's looking for the wrong SO file. So this is a this is a scripting error. This is a bash script. So it has nothing to do with Java or the actual running code. This is deploying it. Um, we are doing a lot of work with Kubernetes right now. We're doing a lot of work with Docker and, and containers. So even if you don't you're not comfortable programming them in Java, if you have system administrator skills, that's very helpful. Uh, testing. Now, if you see that 4.0 quality test epic link. <clears throat> that is that is one that we are really paying attention to because we will not ship 4.0 until that, those are all cleared. And so if you take some of these and you want some help or you got questions, you will get very quick answers because right now I think we, we are down to the last 80 bugs in or the 80 last 80 tickets in Cassandra 4.0 <clears throat> and they're getting... Uh, snapped up pretty quickly, but um, we want to get it done. And so, but the testing is a harder part. If you are, um, if, this is a great way to learn about Cassandra running it or the operational part of it, just because you have to dig into things like what is a reconciled read, read repair? What is that? And to test it properly, you have to understand it. And so this is a great opportunity for you to learn about how the internals of Cassandra work without actually, um, and this is where I think a lot of engineers get worried, is you're not gonna damage Cassandra, you're just testing it, but you have to learn a lot about it. The non-core coding, and this goes back to like the scripting and things like that, is um, we have a lot of observability issues and things that are in JIRA around, uh, right now there's a lot of work around Prometheus, um, collectors, but also things like just basic like log back, using log back. Um, this is not going to stop us from shipping code, but it makes the code base better. And again, you'll learn a lot about how Cassandra works. So we really need a lot of help to get 4.0 shipped. This is, 
this is my my really big plea is we want to get it out there. We need as much help as possible right now. Um, I'm going to throw this out again is um, if getting your name in the contributor list for a major shipping version is a really good career move. <laughs> and we're going to ship t-shirts when this happens. So you could get a t-shirt, but um, and I know everyone wants, but t-shirts like that, they only come around once in a while. We, the last time we shipped one was three years ago because that was the last version that we shipped. So <clears throat> um, it's, a, it's a good mark of distinction and you'll always be in the contributor list for Apache Cassandra. So it's a great thing to have. So what if you are really determined to change Cassandra and you think you have a better idea? <clears throat> well, we have an avenue for you. It's called the Cassandra Enhancement Proposal. And there are a few out there right now. Um, and what they are is they, they are, it's a process so that instead of just writing a feature and hoping that you can get it in, this is a way to propose a feature. Now, it does include, you will have to do some initial work to, to show that it can work, but um, it, it's a process that allows everyone in the project to discuss something before you just try to submit a bunch of code. Um, it en enhances it, it changes it, and you get to know um, things that need to be changed. But this is a great opportunity. If you want a new feature in Cassandra, this is a great opportunity to get it. And you can also get help. Um, if you're just a single, a, a lone coder, someone who's doing it on yourself, and you have a really big idea, you could start it. And this is how you can get help from the rest of the people in the community. If you do, if you had an idea and say a few engineers from Datastax and Apple thought it was really great, they'll help you out. They will help you get that in. So it's a really interesting way to get new things into Cassandra and a lot of really good credibility. <laughs> um, this is the big one. Um, if you, you can't just throw out ideas, say, hey, I have a big crazy idea and you have no intention of actually doing it. That's not the right place for a CEP. You should be at least, um, you know, ready to take that change and drive it to its completion. If not, then yeah, um, you can write a blog post. <laughs> um, that is uh, all I had about the contributions in general, uh, just some general advice. Um, and this is just in general with open source, contributing to open source. Don't take anything personal. It's not personal most times, <laughs> most times. Um, when, when you submit code, when you have a change, um, don't, it's, it's really a, a, it could take time to get things done. Like you won't get someone reviewing it the same day. You know, there's not a large group of people. Um, the reviews sometimes take time, especially if they're complicated because someone's going to have to take your patch, load it, test it, look at the code, comment on it, understand it. So and it's a really great process because we, we get some uh, really good code contributions after the review process. Um, those patches have to be rewritten a few times. Um, and that's, that's just keeping up with community standards. Um, you will, you know, you'll feel somewhat overwhelmed by it because there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's really rewarding. Um, there are, when, and there's some general rules we have about how we conduct ourselves. Always attack the idea, not the person. So when you see people arguing on the mailing list, is that's perfectly fine if it's something about the technology. And that's one of the rules we have, especially in a Cassandra project, is arguments should always be on technical merit, not, oh, you're a terrible engineer that's not okay. You will get invited away. But if you have a strong point of view about a feature, you think it's a bad idea, make your case. And be ready if you submit something, someone else makes their case too. Um, but this is how we get really good code over time. 
there's reason that Cassandra is one of the most popular databases in the world for what it does, because it has a lot of people looking at it. They love it. They care for it. It's, it's a very, it's some people it's like a pet, you know, like me. <laughs> um, so just you're joining a community of people that really love what they do. And it's really cool. Um, the engineers that I've worked with on this project, every background you can think of, every country that you can think of, every point of view about distributed systems you can think of, I, without leaving planet Earth, I don't know how it could get any better. So it's really cool. And I, and I would appreciate anything you contribute to our community because it's, it makes it better. When you contribute, you make our community better. And always be ready to ask questions. And there's always someone there to answer it. Um, you know, we, we, it does look scary. Like, I don't want to look like I'm dumb. Oh, if I ask this question, it's going to be a dumb question. Go ahead. It's okay. And I will give you something personal. If at any time you feel a little unsure or unsteady, you can find me. Patrick McFadden, I'm on the ASF Slack. Just send me a personal message. Ask me anything you want. Hopefully at this point you realize I'm, I'm going to listen to you and I'm gonna to try to help you. Um, there's nothing I would rather do than that. So um, if all else, just feel free to send me a message and say, hey, I got this thing and we'll work it out. Um, but I'm always here to help the Cassandra community. I've been doing it for 10 years. Um, it's one of the best things I've ever done. So I, I would invite everyone to join us if you can.